go top of the <laughs> I mean, yeah. Let's talk about how you know what they want to go top yeah. Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's left on the radio. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What? <laughs> Does turning on your fog lights make you feel like you're making the jump to hyperspace? Try the Bright Source Duo. You can easily toggle from a cool 6,000 Kelvin to an anti glare 3,000 Kelvin by simply turning your fog lights off and then on again. Make sure you can see in bad weather. Try the Bright Source Duo today. What's going on, guys? And thanks for tuning in to yet another CMA Connected presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. And as you can see from the title, as well as the little video we just played there, we had to bring it back for a part two. Yes, part two, because we learned all about the brand known as Bright Source uh, not so long ago with our friends over at Dick's Performance. Now, although that was a great episode, and I do encourage you to go back to that and watch that on demand, we didn't get the job done. No, we did not. We did not fulfill our job as to getting you, the dealers, the right information and showing you the entire catalog. In fact, I would say we only got about half of it done. So we had no choice, really. We had to come back. We had to reschedule this and we had to come back and uh, bring on the guys from Bright Source, bring on the guys from Dix so that we could show you the other half of the catalog. So to do so, we're going to, of course, have to go over to our friends at Dix Performance standing by in their studios in Alberta. Let's go ahead and get them on and back to join us today is, of course, Ashley and Dave McLean from Dick's Performance. What's going on, fellas? Not too much. How are you today? Uh, you see, I'm a little excited because I got pretty excited the last time. And then I, <laughs> when we have ended the show, you're like, oh, but we only got half of the catalog done. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? There's more? I'm like, okay. So uh, here we are. Here we are. Ashley, thanks for joining us again. Hey, anytime. Looking forward to it. Um, so let's, let's preface this, uh, for those who are tuning in and miss, may, may, maybe didn't watch the first one. This is part two of a two part series. Uh, we're talking about a brand called Bright Source, which is a brand out of uh, BC, British Columbia. So it is a Canadian company and it is uh, something that, uh, Dick's performance is very proud to have and, and distributes widely across Canada in, um, in the lighting category. In the first episode, we covered, uh, a lot of the light bars and the cool stuff that they got going on with that. Um, and a little bit of cube lighting as well, if I'm not mistaken. Is, is, is that pretty much the category we covered the first time, guys? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we did all of the exterior add-on lighting. Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, rechargeables, safety lighting, and LED and HID conversion. Ooh, those are some big categories. I can't believe we didn't even get to that the first time around. I guess that's just a testament to how deep this catalog is. Um, so these are very three very relevant, right? categories right now in Canada. I mean, you know, when you talk about safety lighting, you're talking about, I hate to say in just a couple of days, we're about to switch that clock back. And you know what that means? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, nobody looks forward to it. Let's just be honest. The only time it's, it's great is that it kind of, you know, might have an impact on lighting sales, which is great for our dealers, right? So that that's that's super cool too. Um, you know what? I don't think we can do this if we don't get on the, the man himself, the specialist, the dude, behind the brand. What do you think? We should, maybe we should bring him on again to help us out. Good call. Good, good call. Yeah. Let's go back to Vancouver. Is, I, I'm guessing Vancouver. I should never do that. British Columbia. I don't even actually know where. Oh, it's are. Vancouver. Yeah, is it? Vancouver. Oh, yeah. Downtown Vancouver. There you go. Fact. So let's go back to Van City, where we hook up with Mr. Ian McKenzie over at Bright Source. What's going on, Ian? Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Oh, we are doing the very best. We know Excellent. what we're in for. We are in for learning on this lunchtime learning session. More about Bright Source. The fellas gave us a little preamble here about the categories that we'll be going over. And, um, you know, let me first ask you this. How did you like our last session? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for uh, the opportunity. It was great to to be chatting with you about it. Uh, you know, it's it's, it's it's a great dialogue when you have enthusiasts engaged, right? So that's exactly yes, what we yes, And uh, absolutely. looking forward to this one, too. So. We had some good comments come in after the fact because, you know, there is a certain percentage of people who watch this live. And then there's another group of audience that watches on demand and uh suddenly there's some people that realize oh what is this bright source brand so hopefully we're getting some momentum and getting some traction out there getting some eyeballs on this but we only gave them a piece 
today we're going to give them the other piece, aren't we? Sure. Yeah, we are. We're going to go back to kind of where we started, which was in the headlight bulb uh, upgrade model. And uh, so, you know, we started off with HID bulbs and that category um, is not quite as strong as it was initially, but still relevant. And especially uh, as we get into <clears throat> uh, just, a, I think, a no brainer for a lot of folks in the dealer world with the uh, D series uh, HID re OEM replacement bulbs, because, you know, let's face it, there's a lot of those vehicles that have been on the road for a while. Those bulbs are burning out. It's a great opportunity and a, and a no brainer for, you know, a web company or, uh, you know, a retailer to just uh, capitalize on, yeah, just a real basic need and people want, if they can, to get an upgrade. upgrade. So what we can serve it. There's yeah. a couple interesting things about what you just mentioned there. <clears throat> you know, when it comes to um, xenon lights, that's a misconception. A lot of people think they're like they they go. There's, it's endless. It'll never. Burn. It's not true. They totally do. Right. What shocks people is when they call their dealer and ask them how much that replacement <laughs> ballast is, and right. all of a sudden jaws start hitting the floor and people start hanging up on people. You know, it's it's crazy. Um, having yep. said that, there is a tremendous and I think the timing, the curve on that, is coming around full circle where these original, you know, um, units are starting to die out. The replacement right. is, is on the rise. Um, if you're if you're dealing with, with those type of customers, I think they'll be very, very happy to find out the options that they have um, available to them through BrightSource. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we're going to get to that in a minute. Yeah, for sure. So and what's nice about it is it's a really short line. Like, mm -hmm. what is there? Is there five part numbers, Ian? Well, there's 10 if you can include the, uh, the D1S and the D1R. So there's kind of two different uh, categories. But by far and away, the uh, D series, um, S series is the most popular. And I'll, I'll expand on that. In okay. A but I'd like to just start off with really the uh, HID, the bulb, and the technology that goes into that, if I may. Just Absolutely. Let's dive in. It's a. Um, yeah, when we when we got into the business, everybody was doing HID bulbs, and we really wanted to focus on quality material. So we, um, we got into it in a big way with uh, with high quality ballast. So you see that on the slide in the top corner, um, the bulb and the tube. So everything, every little detail was did. And so one of the things that people uh, were complaining about a little bit in the first iteration of HID bulbs was that there was so much glare. Mm -hmm. And that basically be, uh, came ab about as a result of a, a flat glass tube. And what we did is we uh, designed in this patented spheroid design, which actually put a bulge in the, uh, in the tube. There's all sorts of comments I could make about that, but I'll just move right along. This um, is a so family family broadcast that's so. family that's a family show yeah <laughs> um the uh what it the, what it did was essentially focus that light output so it hit the reflectors on the headlight and focus better so you didn't, didn't just get more and brighter light you got focus light which was really a key thing so all of the other aspects there like the the you know the metal halides the ge cut tube everything else comes together to make a really long lasting uh hid product and that's that's really where um just turning on your phone oh, sorry i messed up there um no, okay. that just uh goes a long way to um showing that no stone was left unturned. We, we really wanted to make sure that we had a really solid uh, program with the uh, the basics in that. Uh, uh, could you could you go back to that previous slide? I have a question for you, Ian. Yeah, sure. So if you just go back to that spheroid design there that you were yeah, mentioning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't want to have a reason. And guys, would you mind holding up that bulb again? I know we had that quickly, but I, I I'm very intrigued by something. Sorry, sorry, I made you tip put that away there, Ashley. No, that's fine. Um, Easy. This is something I have never seen before. So whenever it's something I've never seen before, I stop everything because I, I get curious. So hold on. So this is a patented design that you're talking about here. Ian. Yeah. That that bulge or that bump in the in the tube. In the glass. Yeah. In the glass. And what you're saying is that this design helps or 
I'm sorry. What was the the verbiage you used? It helps, helps to focus the the light output and send the light into back into the uh, reflectors and focus that that output so that it is more on the road as opposed to just scattered light. Mm, so. Very interesting. Because I know exactly what you're talking about. Because I used to have that issue. I I, I have replaced um, my OE xenon lights before. And I noticed there was a degradation in the performance compared to the original. I couldn't figure out what it was, and maybe this was it. So I find this very intriguing. Yeah. So that's just one aspect of the uh, of the of the HID system. Um, now I just want to digress for one sec and talk about the uh, daytime running light issues we have here in Canada because. This is completely uh, separate from our American cousins. They, they don't have daytime running lights as a mandate there in the U.S. So a lot of companies that sell into Canada are just unaware of the challenges that the installers have with this DRL system. And it's particularly um, uh, annoying <laughs> when you're trying to put in bulbs and they don't function as you expected to, them to. and or you have an installer saying, "Crap, this is uh, this is flickering, or it's not coming on, or it's my turn you're the being gentle on, on that term. It's not annoying. It's a pain in the you know what. Yes, I mean it absolutely yeah. is. So what we what we did um, is we uh, we developed vehicle specific kits, and the, at the core of that is our uh, made and designed uh, optic coupler, and this is something that. We uh, still manufacture here in Canada. We designed it here. And it's basically a circuit, a printed circuit board that is then waterproof encased. The uh, connectors and the harness that go into um, the system there are all waterproof, weatherproof, et cetera. And this is something that is totally unique. And we've had a lot of people ask us to sell them this product uh, because they want to use it with their own bulb programs. but we it's it's a proprietary technology and and we're we're really happy with the results on this so what the optic coupler does is it works to and i'll use dodge as an example because the dodge rams from you know 2010 to 2019 2018 those model years had a very uh very interesting way of producing the daytime running light feature and that was by running a variable pulse to a halogen bulb and the halogen bulb would be taken down a notch and those filaments would work in the in the way of just producing about a 50 percent light output so on the dodge rams they ran an h13 at a lower uh a lower output off the high beam now fast forward to uh you know the ne the next technology which was hid and even in the led side when you turned or when you put in a vehicle application with a high beam on full power, that really annoys people in traffic. And it was a source of dozens or hundreds of tickets because you're not allowed to run your high beams in city or municipality areas. And so what we did is we, the optic coupler here changed the output from the high beam to the low beam. So you had at least a high, you know, a fully functioning low beam on the DRL. Uh, another thing that we did with this uh, product was that we, you know how that Dodge, and this isn't from the caravan to the trucks and all over the, the Chrysler models, when the turn signal is, is switched on to turn left to right, the headlight goes out. And it's to, the idea is relatively sound because they want to focus the oncoming driver's attention on the, the turn signal. But if you're turning into a dark lane or a dark country road with ditches and you turn the headlight out, yeah, that, doesn't that work amber anymore. doesn't show much. No, no. So we, we, we took that out and we left the light, the headlight on so that it would, you know, illuminate the road and you stayed out of the ditch, which is always a good thing. Um, so there's a bunch of other things that are engineered into this, but those are primarily the, um, the, the main features of this optic coupler. And so in concert with the optic coupler, you get 
for your vehicle the complete wiring harness kit that turns this pretty much into a plug and play. So if light out resistors are required or if there is an anti-flicker device required, all that wiring is uh, included in the kit. And so you don't have to worry about what what else you might need. As, a, as an installer, it's it saves people hours and days even of messing around, trying to, to find the right um, connectors or the, the, you know, just the right components to make this a foolproof install. And you want your customers to be going home once happy, not coming back saying my lights are out, right? They're flickering or what have you. And, you know, that makes a happy customer that makes a, a referral customer that makes somebody who comes back to your shop because you are, you've, you've solved their problem. Um, I love what I see here. The guys are showing um, the full, I guess, assembly of, of right. what you need to put it in. My, my main question here is, and maybe you can describe this verbally, how does that coupler incorporate into the system from a wiring perspective? Because right. I only so, see one plug. Yeah, yeah. So ultimately, from this um, optic coupler, there's a harness that comes out with, and let's use the Dodge again. So there'd be two uh, plugs that plug into the factory harness from the vehicle. And so you've got a, a connection, you got power going to the battery, and then you've got a connection going directly to the OEM switching systems. So that's how it integrates with the, uh, the with the vehicle harness. Wow, that's a serious unit. Yeah. That's like... People sometimes wonder why, you know, our, our uh, headlight kits are more money, and that's because there's meat to it. There's a foolproof Man, you know, man. solution. Dave, Dave, in car audio, that's like a full-out Maestro RR2 kit for lights. Oh, 100%. You know what yeah, I mean? It, it, like, it takes all the guests work out. Yeah, it's all there. You know, we're yeah. making comments off, 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 uh, off the studio stage here that we used to have to build all these things. Yeah. And, you know, 100%. variable resistors and diodes and all these wonderful things. And uh, they weren't waterproof. They're not watertight. And it was a, a guaranteed comeback to the bay. So you just kind of put a timer on every single one of your installs. Uh, we reduced our, our comebacks on lighting by like 80% when we moved to the bright source. So, you know, we used to do some offshore HID stuff like everyone did. And uh, this revolutionized our install beta, really reduced comebacks. And when they do come back, you can see it's a very modular design. You can actually remove the optic coupler from its from its harness, and you can service these kits. So if you have a bad resistor, or if you have an optic coupler that maybe got some moisture in it that it wasn't supposed to, uh, you know, you can replace those components without having to completely unharness a vehicle like we used to. Absolutely, well, wow. like it's like yeah, a T harness. And, and one of the things that we have is again is like dealer and tech support is we have a like a really, really strong resource from uh, Jim Hilton here at our office who, who answers the phone, walks people through uh, the, uh, the, the, the mechanical problem or the problem that's, that's there. And we have an 800 number uh, that people call from, from wherever. And oftentimes we're able to solve it with just a uh, suggestion to, you know, make the connection tighter or, or you need a resistor, a, a new resistor because it's failed or what have you. But we we stick with you again. Like I said in the last episode, if there's an issue, we want it to be solved. And so, yeah, Ash is holding up a, a was holding up a grease, like a dielectric grease. Mm -hmm. It's in the kit, right? Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah. So the other thing that uh, I wanted to sh share with you here is the next slide is uh, a lot of these bulbs have um, a higher profile than the halogen bulb. So you need, in order to keep that headlight um, intact and waterproof or, or weatherproof, you need to have a dust cap that um, provides extra clearance. So again, these are all engineered here. Um, they're manufactured in China, I'll be honest. But the, uh, the one in the top left there is for the... Uh, the projector headlights in the Dodge Ram. We've got uh, head, headlight dust covers for the F-150s for the GMC is in some of the other older models. And again, what you get in the kit is that harness that you saw, or that 
optocoupler, the harness, and the dust caps if required. And so you have a great, everything you need is in that box. I'm going to ask some questions for clarity here, Ian. So you talk about application specific, right? Are yeah, you saying that good. what you're saying is because of the light bulb conversion, mm -hmm. it's that sometimes challenging to reuse the OE dust caps, correct? Sometimes you just can't. Yeah. Sometimes you just can't. So what you're saying is BrightSource offers the application specific solution with custom made to fit dust caps that house the aftermarket yeah. BrightSource right. bulb. Right. Is that a first? I never heard of that. I, that may be a first. I, I know I have, Dave, maybe you can shed some light, but I have never heard of that before. We haven't seen it from anyone else. This is, mm -hmm. it's pretty exclusive to BrightSource in our, in our market. Mm -hmm. uh, and it takes all the hassle of drilling them and, you know, putting in fiberglass reinforcement and building these things in the install bay. You know, you took a basic kit that was $100 and you turned it into a five or $600 kit because of all the custom work you had to do. So as much as there's a, a higher price point on some of the bright source kits, uh, they are truly drop in. They are truly unmodified. You just install them like, like the instructions say, and if you have trouble, you call tech support and they take care of you. And if you need it, it's already in the kit. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, and if you've ever tried to buy um, a dust cap, like an OEM replacement dust cap, because you wanted to, uh, you had to drill it out initially and you're gonna sell your vehicle now and you gotta go get a dust cap kit. <laughs> It's worse than the D series bulbs for, <laughs> for price wise. It's like, I don't know. Oh, they're hundreds of dollars, aren't they? Like, yeah. And a lot of times they're not available. Cap. And, a lot and of we do sell them available. separately. We should yeah. also mention, right? Yeah. Do, and we do, 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 the, do the aftermarket ones, the you ones you have also fit the original bulb? Just if you want to leave it. I'm just curious. This is a stupid question, but I would, I would now want to know. Yeah, they could. Yep. And okay. there's a grommet that comes to fill that hole. So it, it, it does keep the, uh, the water out. So. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Uh, so vehicle specific was really our, our main accelerator oh, yeah. in this uh, headlight world. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to come into a cool discussion on LED bulbs in a second. But I wanted to just uh, reinforce that uh, D-series program for a second here. So the D-series bulbs are... Uh, on the screen there so there's a d1 there's a d2 a d3 a d4 and now a d5 um there's a d1 r d2 r d3 r etc so there's either d1s or d1r and you can sort of extrapolate on that for each bulb and it's just just real interesting like the d1s there's like 2,400 vehicle models out there. The D2S, there's 2,000. The D3S, there's 4,100. The D4 is smaller. It's like 470. But the D5S is at 820 vehicle models. So there's a ton of vehicle models out there that um, apply to this, uh, albeit a specialty segment. But guess what? Is there a mobile audio store that's not a specialist? No, they're all specialists. Right. Yeah. 100%. And, you know, the the uh, the D5 is a really interesting case in point of a huge opportunity because the D5 bulb that comes from General Motors and it's in some Chevy trucks as well uh, is a 25 watt bulb with a 4300 Kelvin color. So the color is definitely uh, crisper white than you'd see in a halogen bulb. Uh, but we saw a huge opportunity to upgrade that. So we do have a 4,300 Kelvin uh, bulb offering, but we upped the, uh, the wattage to 35 watts. Because, I mean, one of the things that people were saying to us when they say, I mean, they're begging us to come up with a better solution was like, this bulb is dim. I'm, I'm driving this really expensive truck and I don't have great lighting. I've got decent lighting. I want great. So... The D5S we sell is a 35 watt model, so 10 watts over stock. There's a 4300 if you want to stay in that uh, in that OE uh, range OEM mm -hmm. coloration. Uh, but we have a 5500, so that is even crisper and whiter. And it's just uh, late in day. Sorry, it's just awesome as an upgrade. And once you have it, you're not going to go back. Uh, and this as a as a dealer, so typically a person will come in into a, a store and say, Yeah, I got a D1S or a D, excuse me, I need to re replace my D5 bulb. Um, got one out. 
sell them in pairs, guys, because as soon as they put those in, I guarantee you that the 10 year old bulb is not going to be as crisp and white. Mm, as the, gonna, even though with the same rating, you'll see the difference. You'll see the difference. Mm -hmm. So sell them in pairs because your customer will be happy because he won't come back saying, You should have sold me a pair. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> right. And if he still insists not on getting the pair, then. And, and you know, it's like anything go. else. If this one's out, that one can't be too far behind. So, right. That means we'll not, so I'll save you the trip now. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the D5, the D series LED or HID, excuse me, HID bulbs are a great option. There will be some LED bulbs. We're doing some testing with this now, but there will be some D series LED bulbs uh, on the market soon. And I think we'll have some fun with those uh, moving forward as well. But that's, cool. that is where we, uh, where we're finding some stuff, some great opportunities for, for sales. I uh, just want to also mention we, we've just done a, bulb lookup upgrade for our website. So this will be implemented in the next, hopefully by the end of October. Um, and this makes the lookup process more like, um, it's from Federated in the US. So it's kind of like uh, the, the industry standard way of looking at bulbs. And you can integrate that into your uh, computer system uh, easily. And we are going to do that, it's just, we're just working through some of the final stages of, of bulb lookup, but it'll be a, an enhancement for sure on our website to make it a little bit easier to, uh, to work with. Any questions? Do you have any more on that, Ben? Are you good? No, no. I'm, okay. we, I'm looking at a time, so we need to uh, speed yeah. our way through this. Yes. Let's get to the next well, category. It's a big one. Give you a quick LED overview. And uh, this is a just kind of an LED bulb base history. So, when you have LEDs in a plastic housing, you need to be able to cool it. We started off with a fan, with a with a, a fabric that we used uh, to uh, wick heat away from that uh, uh, from the circuit board to allow for longevity and performance. Um, you see on the left there that generation. Then we engineered our own base because we wanted something that would have a lower profile and be easier to install. So that um, passive heat sink you see on the uh, middle frame is uh, was, was hugely successful and we still employ it on our duo bulbs, but we're taking the game up a notch with our maglev bulbs. And you'll see this maglev cooling system that uh, is employed maglev technology is employed on high speed rate high speed rail applications in areas where minimizing friction is a is a techn technological goal and so in our balls we have these magnetic forces that are used to elevate the fan and that eliminates contact in the operating base uh, operating area in the base so one one thing that the fan does is it allows us to up the um the wattage on the bulb and, and so we have single filament and dual filament bulbs that are now running at around 45 to 50 watts and that is a huge upgrade plus we've uh, redesigned at the placement of the led chips on the circuit board so that they more exactly meet the uh, placement of the halogen filaments so just match up better so in big headlights like the f series h13 headlights for either the you know the super duties or the f-150s where they have big buckets to fill people are really happy with our current nine series bulbs on low beam because it was a major upgrade but on high beam it kind of lacked and so we wanted to move forward and and improve that performance and we've done that not only because of the higher wattage but because of the chip placement and that just makes things much much easier for um you know for the whole system to work as it should and so that's kind of a question for you question for you Ian. yeah i've experienced bulbs with fans for cooling yeah. which were exceedingly noisy right is this an issue with these bulbs they're certainly a lot quieter and part of the reason is that the maglev bulb has a um has that lower friction uh, story to it. And so it, there is some noise, but it's not, you don't feel like the radiator's running. 
with <laughs> with yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. And and are and are you describe those three examples? Are those the three different levels of bulbs that are available at different price points? The um, the first the first there is not available anymore from BrightSource. Okay. Uh, we moved on from that. The uh, second two are we're in a crossover. So inventory wise, uh, those new series of maglev bulbs are, are taking over from the passive heat sink base of the nine series right now so that's just something that's just gradually changing over as we move through our inventory so the future is in uh fan cooling yes right there okay. yeah all right yeah yeah um yeah so just coming back to the dual bulbs now just uh for one last uh shot at it i just wanted to review that um and you saw it in the, in the opening video, but this is a really interesting and super easy to uh, apply upgrade. Uh, the factory fog lights are somewhat of a misnomer. Like typically if uh, the lights placed in the lower valence of a vehicle are there for either driving uh, and or fog uh, applications, um, but mostly they're there to look nice. So on vehicles where you uh, actually want the function and your, 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 your lights actually do project. Having a white light, as you saw, gives you that hyperspace look in snow. You can't see, it's blinding you back yeah, because it's, it's just the glare on glare. And so by literally by uh, installing these bulbs, turning on your factory fog light, switching it off and turning it on again, you're able to change the color of output which is either for vanity or for practical use. And you can just have whatever you choose. So you've got a, a, a different looking vehicle all of a sudden with that um, yellow light output, but it's also super functional as you saw in that video, it's, it's there. And by the way, if you didn't see the video or if, or if, you, if you wanted to see that again, it's available on our YouTube channel. I know Dix has it in, in part of, as part of their uh, web offerings as well. So it's something that you can go back to if you if you wanted to show a customer uh, what what they what they're getting when you do this, it's it's uh, it's an easy thing to find. And uh, also a very generally, generally speaking, a very easy to adopt install, because it literally unplugs, you pull the bulb out, the halogen bulb out, you plug it back in, you, and then you reinstall it on the vehicle and they're usually easy to get at. So can be a very easy and uh, uh, quick install. And, and I guess that's a profit maker for the dealers too, right? Yeah, th this I feel, rec I would recommend any dealer to have this on a demo board of some kind to show them what how that works and how easy that is and what that does for sure. Yeah. All right, All right let's keep it going. Okay, Dave, do you have anything to add to that or are you? Uh... We sell a lot of dual bulbs. Um, in our climate with winter right around the corner mm. um, that's a very easy upgrade that this is soccer moms this is aunts and uncles grandparents you know it's it's not the demographic you would think of in a performance shop mm -hmm. um, these are upgrades for everybody you know where i see that where i saw it first in sledders yeah sure skidoo guys i yeah. in the wind i see i said whoa what are these crazy yellow lights i see flying around they they and then when i talked to them it's exactly what you said when it's snowing you can't see anything when it's just white no and no. Uh, they don't want to i'm actually trees. surprised that no oes put yellow lights in their sleds to be completely honest oh it's way too edgy you're asking too much you're asking too much <laughs> too edgy <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. Now that being said, we do not recommend running them in headlights, do we? No, we they don't. Are, no. They are no, only no. for fog applications. Yes, but. yes good absolutely. point, Ash. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, right. we're going to move on to our bright source safety. So program. before before you do that, I have to preface this with a question to Dave. Yeah. Dave, safety lighting for me has only been a kind of a recent thing. Like all of a sudden, it starts popping up. Dealers are talking about it. Manufacturers start putting a product. Is that a trend that you see right now happening with, with our yeah, shops? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're seeing a lot more service industry trucks being built right now. Lots of changeovers and transitions. Um, there's been a lot of technology changing in, in this marketplace. It used to be one or two players with very complicated systems to make things flash and do all these wonderful things you need them to do. Um, and this has made this market much easier for us to penetrate. Um, it allows guys to have things to convert their daily driver into a safety vehicle relatively quickly. 
uh, as well as some hardware options that are really stellar. So uh, I'm excited about this category. All right. Yeah. So I've got the logo up there. I'm just going to move directly into our compilation video here. Um, and Ben, do you mind running that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Here we go. Flashy lights, you got my attention. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as as Dave was saying, uh, the safety market is uh, whether you're working for Canada Post and you need a you know a, a temporary uh, beacon that you stick on the roof of your vehicle for your shift while you're moving mail around, or so many people have bobcats, they need you know some notification system if they're you know, outside of their yard or even in their yard when they're moving around. Uh, so we have a, a, a selection of, you know, we have beacons, we have these mini light bars, we have um, a rechargeable beacon, which Ash is showing there, and we have marker lights. So there's a, a good range of products available here that can be uh, added to uh, a selection so what we have there on the on this show uh sign story slide is a uh a couple of our uh what that top left is a large beacon we have the medium-sized beacons and we have the small beacons um and just I, I think you saw in the video there uh a large dude was standing on the um the lens of the large beacon and that that was something that uh, my partner, John, whose weight will not be disclosed publicly, but is a big dude. And he's, he did that at a, at a trade show. And that uh, just actually really made us sit up and take notice because these products are really, really well designed. Um, they have uh, a, sort of an unmatched inner um, uh, technology that's waterproof and super highly uh, equipped with great quality uh, LEDs. And I think Ash is unscrewing one there to, to show you. So that that on that rechargeable beacon gives you an idea of the innards. And so what you see with a lot of products out there, especially older products, is that they have, you know, like a stick with one LED on either side of it, and it's uh, it's not waterproof. Uh, they work, rely on the on the uh, connection between the lens and the body to to keep it uh, solid. But this is another level, and you know, and I don't, I, I really don't want to lead ever with price. But our products are really, really well priced, and so you're you're and you can check with the Dix folks on on pricing with these. But both acquisition wise and on the retail side, um, there are some just incredible uh, deals there now one of the things that we wanted to make sure we were doing an offering in the different sizes especially in the large and the medium sized beacons was, was sae uh, marked products because if you're on a highway you need to have a certain brightness in order to, for uh, that uh, vehicle to qualify as a warning uh, vehicle or a, a traffic management vehicle and they need to be bright enough so we've got uh, mid-sized beacon, a large beacon, uh, and even our rechargeable beacon there is a, an SAE marked light. So they're good for highway use. And there's tons of <laughs> anywhere you go in a city or on a highway, you're seeing construction, right? That's just happening mm -hmm. everywhere in the in the uh, world. And so, yeah, as we we're a little bit tight for time, I just wanted to mention that there are models that have um, Hard, that are hardwired and permanently mounted. We've got models that are um, magnetic based with a little vacuum seal um, that plug into a, an accessory power outlet that then gives you um, a two position switch to turn something on and then to cycle through different 
um, pattern. So you can have up to 10 or, or even more uh, flash patterns depending on the needs in your, of your workplace and your work site. So Ash is showing that uh, right there with the Really, that's like a very complete range when it comes to beacons. Yeah, it's 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 very uh, very very. Uh, you take beacons very seriously, can, sir. There's lots more you can do with it in terms of different colors. So red and blue, of course, are reserved for for the police. Yeah, police and, or and emergency, emergency vehicles. vehicles but yeah, yeah. So no, but like just the snowblower market, like you know the guys, the contractors, they're clearing the snow. Like, oh, sir. yeah, perfect. I mean, that's yeah. it right there. Yeah. So. I just want to show you our mini light bar. This is um, one of our most popular items uh, right now. And uh, it's in use on everything from heavy duty trucks to um, to Bobcats, frankly. Uh, it's anywhere, anywhere and everywhere in between. Uh, incredible value with this uh, mini light bar. It has, uh, it's, it just want to take just a real quick second on it for the, uh, it's got like 10 flash patterns. It's got magnetic mount or it has a, um, a bolt that comes with it. So it can plug into uh, a plate on a headache rack or on a, uh, some other, you know, the back of a canopy or something. Um, and we have, I think we have a video on that too, but I've got a, but we're not going to play that one. I want to just play the marker light one. So we're going to go, uh, to marker lights now and, Ash, do you have this one? Um, I'm just going to show the slide, and I wonder if you have one in, in hand because one of the stories with this is just the how slim it is. So I'll just exit from from here, and we'll go to Ash if he's got it in his hot little hands there. But you can see how low profile that is. And one of the things that happens with marker lights is they get knocked off, and they get knocked off because they stick up. <laughs> this yeah. has got a very very low profile, and the uh i noticed it's clear ian i thought all marker lights were red or amber right yeah so i uh, please feel free to go ahead and, and set up that video because the, uh, the video shows an application with uh, a trailer and a truck and you'll see right. marker lights all around it let's take a look so there you go. This is this trailer here is fully equipped with those marker lights that you're talking about. Right. And you have the um, opportunity here to run, I believe it's like 20 different lights in series. So if you wanted it to sequence around the, the vehicle or the trailer, you could, uh, or you can synchronize it. So you can synchronize it between the trailer and the truck. So right. All right. running at the same time. It's all pulsing at the same uh, yeah. pace. Yeah, and there's yeah, 19 yeah. different patterns you have with uh, with the, with your options to. Are they independently controlled, or is there a controller? Uh, they are. They're, they're centrally controlled. So yeah, centrally there's a wiring map that comes with it that shows you how to wire that and, gotcha. and select and how. And there's a memory function as well. So. So the two white wires is how you sync them together, right? So you would just keep adding and adding and adding with the two whites. Obviously, black is ground, red is power. And then this is you would you would cycle this on a switch to change the flat the flash patterns. So gotcha. really simple to be Perfect. honest. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now just on the rechargeable beacon, uh, we have the, that uh, model right in Ash's hot little hands there. So this is a uh, magnetic. Stop calling my hands hot. <laughs> magnetic base. So range of application with this for the casual users is huge. Uh, we have a that metal plate for Ford vehicles that have aluminum bodies or, mm, or you supply the canopies. plate as well. Yeah, there you go. And canopies with fiberglass or plastic uh, bases. This has got 3M tape on it. It ain't going anywhere after it's installed. And then it just keeps that uh, light on the vehicle. And then there's a little tab you lift to, to take it off that uh, makes it super easy to remove. So, all right. Yeah. So that eight is, hour run time, four hour charge time. Is that correct? Either? Eight hours. Yeah. Eight hours in cold weather. Nonstop. Nonstop. Continuous use. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, we're going to move from this, if you're good, with uh, on to rechargeables, because we've got a bunch of rechargeables to show in a short period of time. A big category as well, rechargeable lighting. Yeah. So we've got a, a tech series, which complements our red series products that you'll see there on the, uh, on the table. Um, and we're going to start with the, uh, the headlamp uh, first. And a lot of headlamps out there, let's be honest. And they range in price from X to Y, right? So... This has got so many features, we really couldn't not bring it into our lineup. So you can turn it on, you can turn it onto a motion sensor uh, option by hitting the second button. And then you can either wave your finger in front of it or your hand in front of it or tap it and it'll turn it off. Oh. So if, you're, if you're under a vehicle and you uh, want to make sure that you're you're able to see stuff, but your hands get all greasy. Sometimes that leads to duck in the switch. And, you know, by be, being able to just wave your hand in front of it, it makes a, uh, it makes it easy to keep it all cleaned and just turn it on when you want it. So there's multiple uh, output patterns there. There's a spot, there's a wide angle work light, but it also oh. detaches from the uh, head band and it's got two magnets on the base. And really then, and then show them the uh the tilt factor so now it tilts and it spins a full 360. so you can put that <laughs> on, on the undercarriage and have it aimed at the area at your work area and your hands free you just got to remember to take it off when you leave <laughs> that is very unique ian i have to say i'm a somewhat of a rechargeable light buff i collect this stuff just like i collect oh. knives and other weird stuff show me a guy who doesn't want flashlights but this thing not only is it great for technicians but when look if you work outside in the cold like snow removal or anything like that you're wearing gloves you can't feel these rubbery buttons sometimes on your lamps what a great 100%. idea to have a motion sensor turn that on and off and yeah it'll work with a snow glove on or whatever yeah, right 100 yeah. percent. or outdoorsmen hunters you know all that type of yeah, stuff it's outdoorsmen fantastic. i was just going to say we use these a lot for safety lighting mm -hmm. um, if you're going to put it in a survival pack you know, it's a one light solution to that. Yeah, survival it does path, it all. Right? You, you don't can, have to carry a stick light and a headlamp yeah, and a yeah, this yeah. and that. Totally. Um, you know, trail side repairs, all that good stuff. Yeah, that's very, a very, very versatile light. Yeah, so on that good. wide angle setting, it has a four and a half hour runtime and then uh, two and a half hours to a full charge. So rechargeable too. It doesn't even take batteries. It's rechargeable. Correct. Yeah. And that's the key thing. Like, wow. you know, safety for the volume, good for the planet. Good for everybody because uh, the you first can plug to, that into your accessory yeah. in your uh, charger in your vehicle and away you go. It's a micro. I feel USB. guilty the amount of AAA batteries I've gone through. Guilty. <laughs> me too. You mean yeah. well, and they're sold in a really nice um, like shelfer, I guess you would call it. So a six pack, and it just sits on your counter. And if you take one out of the package and let guys play with it and show them the features and benefits, it's a it's a no brainer. And it can be sold anywhere, yeah, absolutely nice. anywhere. Yeah, hundred percent. Cool. So moving on to the next is uh, this flexible uh, gooseneck uh, uh, work light in our tech series. So this is a Ooh, the slim light. really cool piece in the sense that it has multiple functions. So actually, when you push and hold, it'll activate the, uh, the spot, push it again, and that brings up the panel. Now you can range the panel anywhere from 50 lumens to 500, so you can dim it. I don't know about you guys, but once you've found where you need to be in a work area, you don't necessarily need that glaring light now that you're working on it. And so that gives you the option of uh, up to 14 hours at the 50 uh, lumen level. So it's your choice as to how long you want to use it. But uh, this has got a uh, that, that flexibility of finding, just moving that uh, uh, 20 centimeter gooseneck a uh, flexible piece to the area you want to illuminate. It's got a base that is magnetic. Um, it has a hook in the base as well. So again, multiple choices for for uh, for use and utility. The uh, just just ab above or below the uh, switch, there is a battery charge indicator. So it uh, it'll sh come up with green. Um, Green, like green LEDs there, so you can get fully charged there. And this is a USB-C um, charge point. So even, 
even easier to 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 install than a, the a micro USB. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, the next one up is the twin beam pocket light. So this is a smaller, I call it the mid sized piece, and so it fits in your fist, like a, uh, just like a, a piece of your hand almost. And if you're looking down a pipe or if you're looking around for something, it's great to have something like this uh, in your uh, in your work or toolbox. It has uh, four different lighting levels, so it's got a spotlight and then a 700 lumen floodlight down to a 100 lumen floodlight. And again, that 100 lumen uh, setting will run for 14 hours. So if you're working a long shift, you've got light all. 14 all hours on a single charge. Yeah. Wow. So okay. The magnetic base, super strong magnets in the base. And as you can see, it's got like 180 degree um, uh, option for, for, for uh, positioning. So you've got all sorts of... Uh, utility with that too and it has uh the same recharging uh you know uh, leds as well as the usb -C. now you know are you promising these are canadian weatherproof you know what and thanks for bringing that up because the housing is uh a, like an aluminum housing with a rubber uh casing on it so when your hands are are slippery with oil or grease it makes it easier to hold and these are i don't want to encourage us but we've drop kicked these around the shop and what about when it's cold like can i keep this outside of my outdoor shop yeah 100 percent. yeah okay absolutely yeah really cool yeah i'm going to show you the next one here and this is a like a small foldable piece so first of all very slim profile uh has the utility of being able to a wand open right up into a uh a find me sort of pattern i don't know if you can see this but anyway yeah, yeah we can see that pattern up top mm -hmm. and then there's two levels in the middle and then there's also a front facing panel so uh, i love this for hands free because if you got a shirt on or a vest on and oh, you want to you know hands wise you've got that kind of uh illumination that is like a pocket light literally yeah, does everything absolutely. but it fits in your pocket and that's why we call it the foldable slim pocket light oh there you go See? See? i yeah. didn't even know that i was just looking at that design that's <laughs> a pocket there. light for sure yeah so these are uh this is our tech series um and we're we've got dealer packs available uh in these as ash hinted at the top uh, and you get a little bit of a price break when you buy the dealer pack so some are in sixes some are in eights uh, but check with your dick sales person on that I should, um, I should mention right here, I know we're, we're short on time, but if you guys are watching this in a timely fashion, if you head over to our dealer groups on our Facebook page, we're going to have some information uh, specifically about these rechargeable series of lights from Bright Source, courtesy of Dix. So if you're not a member of our exclusive dealer group, what are you doing? Make sure you sign up. Um, only store managers and owners are permitted in our group. So Canadian Mobile Audio dealer groups, that's where you're going to get some info. All right, please continue. Yeah, so now I'm just gonna run through our Red Series products as well. So this is where we started with rechargeables and this uh, line is running strong still. Uh, we have at the start there, we have um, our uh, 79101R. So this is a this is a four by six uh, size light um, and has a, one thing that's nice about this packaging wise is that the uh, of one of the SKUs, they all have a try me button on the back of the clamshell. So you can turn it on in the package and somebody oh, can see, you can cool. cycle it through. So all of these lights, uh, with the exception of the triangle light, which has more features, has a 100%, uh, a 50%, and then advanced feature mode, I call this probe. So people definitely get going with, uh, with dancing around the fire on, uh, on strobe. But uh, so there's a four by six, there's a five by seven, there is a uh, uh, a triangle light. The triangle light is cool because it's got uh, light output in two levels, and then it's got a solid red. It looks orange on here, but it's actually red. And then it's uh, got the flasher. So if you're broken down on the side of the vehicle or oh. on the side of the trail, you pop that puppy out, and it should be in everybody's vehicle. And uh, so that's a great, Dude, great. You know great what? Thing. That's great for too. Is if you're carrying lumber or something big on your pickup. Oh, 100 percent that's a great piece to have. long load marker yes sorry yeah, i didn't have the verbiage thank you that's what i meant yeah. 
but uh, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's great. For Absolutely. That. Perfect. And um, these all will charge your cell phone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? There's a yeah um, a USB port there that has uh, the capacity to charge your cell phone, which is fantastic. All right. So, so camping, a, for example, the speaker, yeah. right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So winter camping, summer camping, what have you? We've got a speaker light there too, and that's the seven nine one one oh six R. So it's a nine and a half inch wide, five inch tall uh, light. And then it's got the utility of the speaker. So the the speaker, it's just super handy. Like it, it's not huge. Like it, it's it's not like some of the speaker packages out there that are, you know, twelve by twelve so or something. Waterproof? Uh, yeah, it's it's water, it's water resistant. It's, it's water resistant. You can't. You don't. You, yeah. It won't play underwater. That's not what right. We're saying. It's not going to play underwater. But you sure. can go camping with it. It gets a yeah. little moist. You're good. You got a light. It's durable. It's rechargeable. You can charge your phone, and you can Bluetooth connect it to your phone to play music. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, there's one last piece there, or two last pieces. Sorry. The uh, there's a flexible unit. So that is the uh, one o um, uh, one ten. So that is the uh, this this model you're seeing there. Uh, that allows you to with the base. Um, expand the base and you can use it in to paint a hallway to paint a room um it's uh i love playing with this light because it's got this great little ratchet sound and it just uh, it, it goes into place wherever you need it well and that's great if you're working under the body of a vehicle absolutely uh, it's slim 100%. for that yeah yeah mm -hmm. and then the uh last one i want to mention is the uh, other uh folding flashlight it's a little bit bigger than the uh, foldable slim pocket light, but it's uh, it's a uh, again really good utility, and we've got a combo in that seven nine one one zero one RT. So we put together the foldable flashlight and that little four by six piece. So that's a great value piece, and uh, all of these are available in dealer packs too. So you know, I, I have to say this is what I'm going to say here. I've been in a lot of trainings and presentations for lighting for our you know our twelve volt specialists. This is the first time I've been through one where is this expansive as far as a lighting offering from one brand, one singular brand. You know, we've talked about LED conversions, xenon headlights. You talk about safety lights and, and beacons. You're talking about markers. You were talking about, now we're talking about rechargeable multi-purpose utility lighting with speakers in some cases. Um, and then that's not even talking about the light bars and everything we covered in our first episode. So right. I guess what my takeaway from this is that Bright Source is darn serious when it comes to lighting. They're not kidding around. They are deep. They don't, they, you know, if it has an LED in it for lighting, um, you guys are kind of on top of it. So we try to be, and we got uh, lots more coming. Like we have developments. Uh, Dave's just showing a new scene light there that is. Uh, what canopy. was that? Sorry, that didn't fit any description that we've looked at so far. Can yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it, I would say it, door trailer like, type stuff. So like if you have a, a car hauler or a boat uh, or an RV and you need some serious outdoor lighting, you can mount that on the wall, down firing. Gotcha. Canopies, canopies. inside uh, canopies. Inside canopies, over the barbecue. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Gotcha. But uh, That'd be great for inside an enclosed trailer too. Totally. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Race car guys. Race car guys. Yeah, I was just yeah. thinking of that too. So we all have right. more coming. We got lots of design stuff happening all the time here, and uh, we are uh, we're, we're really excited about where we are and where we're going. And uh, we're just looking to uh, work with more people, and that's uh, one of the reasons we're here. And we just again, we appreciate the partnership with Dix, and uh, the, we have this really comprehensive dealer catalog that has everything you've seen in the last two episodes. In uh, sort of tech formation. There's very little marketing mumbo jumbo in this. It's all what you need to know. So if somebody wants to know the lumens, the wattage, how long the, the product's going to last in the rechargeables, it's uh, it's all there. And uh, the last thing is, we again, we, we back our dealers. So if there's a warranty issue, you say the LED bulb is out, you say this LED node is out, whatever, we stick with you. You make the decision that goes back to, uh, to, to Dix or our other distributor to uh to verify but you know you make the decision on whether it's a warranty or not and uh if you can 
deal with it out of inventory, great. It, we'll, we'll issue you a credit or send you a product or whatever, whatever works. Uh, we want to work with you. So right coast to coast here in Canada, we're just all over doing a great job of uh, supporting our dealers. And uh, yeah, we're, we're happy to be growing with you. So. Hey man, the boss said it right here, live on Connected. So if you said it, it means it's good. It's done. <laughs> uh, Ian, listen, uh, wow, that hour passed really quick, but thank you for, for, for getting all that in. It's a ton of information with a ton of products that are certainly interesting. I want to thank you for taking the time to, to be with us and for these two episodes of sharing everything um, that you guys have over at the Bright Source Camp. So thank you so much. Thanks very much. Take care. Thanks, Ash and Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Take care, guys. Dave McLean. You weren't kidding when you said Bright Source was a serious big brand. Holy smokes, right. that's a lot of product. But you know what I like about that is if I'm a store and I'm going to get serious about lighting, like there's a lot you right can there. Fill all the categories, yeah. And you great. know, there's something to be said about that because we've talked about this in other connected uh, episodes where you know it's about that image that you want to portray to your customer. When you when you have a brand that is deep with you. You show you're showing that customer that you have confidence in that brand. Therefore, you're confident to sell that to the customer. I feel like this is one of those situations. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when someone trusts the work light they use every day on a brand, right. what's the brand of light bar they're going to buy, right? So, you know, having some multifaceted use and really, you know, talking to different customer bases, you know, it's uh, it's something that isn't for everybody. Like, not every piece will everyone buy, but maybe your uncle will buy this and your step cousin will buy that and you know different people will have different tastes and they all get to see bright source in a different way and they get to expand their lighting horizons with having some really good quality lighting that really is designed for where we use it and is very well thought through it is very well thought through i cannot say enough about that actually uh th i want to thank you as well for taking the time oh. to join us today yeah happy to be here happy to be here being yeah. a, a fantabulous model for these products Oh, look at that. Knocked it go. over. <laughs> yeah, you do what you can, right? Absolutely. No, you do what you can. Uh, and, I'm you gonna know, go ahead. Yep. I'm gonna go ahead and no, put up just... these digits here on the bottom here while we're talking here. Yeah. Great. Yeah, absolutely. So just like Ian was saying, we do have some placement programs out there. Um, you know, those multi-packs, those six and eights, those are all available at Dix. Um, yeah, if you head over to the dealer network there, you'll be able to see some pricing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you give us a call. Absolutely. Get a hold of Dix. There's the number on the bottom. If not, get over to our CMA dealer groups. We're going to put up some interesting information about Bright Source and pricing for you guys. So uh, give them a call, make an order. Guys, thank you so much. It's been a blast. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, ben. Thank Take you. care. And there you have it Bright Source Part Two, courtesy of Dick's Performance. Again, I want to reiterate um, we're going to put up some information over in the dealer group. So make sure you're part of that dealer group CMA dealer group on Facebook page, owners and, sh and uh, shop managers only. Uh, on that note, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. That was a good one. We'll be back again. Um, on Friday with another connected. Um, and yeah, wow, bright source lighting. Check it out. Canadian homegrown goodness in the LED lighting category. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, to another episode of CMA Connected. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Mm -hmm.